For victims and villains, my name is Josh, and today we are jumping into the latest from M. Night Shyamalan. This is Trap. Trap tells the story of a serial killer that essentially takes his daughter to a pop uh, star's concert only to find that the FBI has planted it as a trap to actually catch him. This movie is proof of why I continue to give M. Night Shyamalan chances as a director. I feel like Shyamalan is the only director still working in the genre today that just has a wide range of films or stories that he tells that are set within the horror genre. And some swing big and completely miss. And then you have ones like Trap or Split that swing very big. They're a little bit more intimate. They're a little bit more not as ambitious. And they just have really solid stories at their core. I loved every second of this movie. There is not a, a moment of this movie that I didn't like or that I hate it. And I think the reason that I feel as strongly as I do about this film is because it feels like I break from the typical formula that Shyamalan has. And thanks to these six cents, Shyamalan has kind of crafted a career being the quote unquote twist guy. And it's not a bad thing, but I feel like audiences, including myself, have kind of just come to expect twists from him. And I feel like that expectation really dilutes it. In the last few years, I've kind of let that go of what, where's the twist? When is it coming? I feel like I've just kind of let that expectation go. And I feel like in doing so, it really allowed me to enjoy this film way more than I may have uh not had I expected a quote-unquote twist. Like I said, this movie breaks away from the typical structure or formula that Shyamalan has kind of garnered a reputation for. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but this movie definitely has a level of camp that I've found to be very appealing. It's not often in Shyamalan movies that you find elements of comedy that are... Uh, where characters are using for comedic relief or there are character dynamics that also add to that relief. But here I found that between uh, Ariel Donahue and Josh Hartnett's character, the father and, and daughter, that had a lot of not only really good chemistry, but also at the same time that there is this level of lighthearted humor and that really allows the tension in the film, especially the later tension, to really be amplified in that version. Jonathan Langdon's another performance in this movie that also adds to that comedic relief, and they use him as comedic relief. Like He feels a little bit more obvious of the comedic relief and definitely is a uh, not only a scene stealer, but also a very memorable part in this movie. And I will say, eventually, the film kind of gets to this part where a lot of that humor kind of dissipates, which is fine, but then it kind of transforms into this other film entirely. Like, essentially, this movie was pitched as Silence of the Lambs set at a Taylor Swift concert, and I think that he captures the culture of those concerts really well in this movie, and he definitely does have those elements of those old school like psychological films that would star Hannibal Lecter but this film reaches a point where it kind of changes entirely and that's not to say it's for a bad thing but there is this massive tonal shift that happens as a part of that evolution and as I kind of think where I have a love-hate relationship with this movie First off, it's a great to see Josh Hartnett back on the big screen and back in this kind of starring role. I absolutely loved him in this. Not only does he have the charisma to be this very caring and very loving father, but also at the same time, he's demented and twisted enough to really lean into a believable serial killer. And I just kind of felt that the dynamic and just the range that Hartnett shows here is reason in and of itself just to see this movie. And no matter what part of the story that Shyamalan is telling or what tone the, the narrative is set in, Hartnett just absolutely crushes it 110%.
There is not a dull moment or a moment where he phones it in. Like he is completely diving into this character and essentially disappearing. I don't know how many other people will talk about this, but I loved the use of lighting in this film. There are tons of shots of Hartnett in particular where the uh, lights are surrounding his eyes. And I, I get that he has brown eyes and this could have just been a, a, a coincidence, but I loved how they really just made his eyes essentially completely black for some of his interactions. I think not only does it really help with the foreshadowing of the journey of the character, but also at the same time, it really makes him a lot more menacing than just kind of finding an average Joe on the street and then kind of following a similar journey. So Iga Shyamalan plays the pop star in this movie, the beloved Lady Raven, and I really feel like she did a great job. I feel like this is the second film this summer that we've gotten from a Shyamalan daughter. And as an actress goes, this Shyamalan definitely has a potential future in here. I would love to see kind of what she's able to do post this movie uh, to, to know if she really has range or if this is just kind of a lucky break for her. I will say that when the film is set within the concert, there is this immersive, uh, claustrophobic feeling that Shyamalan does really well. And I think it's just thought that that part in the tension was woven extremely well. And then we leave the concert hall. I'm not saying very much about it, but I felt like the this is the kind of the moment where I started having issues with pacing, with tone. And the film kind of just felt like it took on another life entirely. That's not to say that the movie loses its entertainment value after it makes that departure. It's just where, it's just the noticeable point where a lot of the issues start coming into place. This is not one of the longer movies we've had this summer. This movie is right around 100 minutes. But I definitely would say the last act feels like it goes on a little bit too long. This would have been a perfect film to kind of cut off at 90 minutes and, and trim. Pacing this movie definitely gets a little bit uh, wonkier the, the closer it gets to the end. And as a result, it just kind of drags on a little bit further than it actually needs to. All right, well, I'm ready to run this through our Rorschach rating scale. I am going to go ahead and give Trap a four out of five. Now, I know that Shyamalan is a divisive filmmaker, and that's not going to be everyone's reaction. But for me, I genuinely enjoyed this film. I thought it was entertaining. Josh Hart, and it's great. Uh, as a fan of pop music, I think this, this film also has a great soundtrack and a great uh, in-universe uh, pop star that feels very modern. There are surprises with that concert that I really liked. But also, at the same time, there are comedic moments and campy moments in this movie that you don't find very often in Shyamalan movies. And I just felt like this felt refreshing and it felt something new that we haven't seen from him before. He took a swing and it really worked in my opinion. All right, if you guys have seen Trap, what did you guys think about it? Comment below, let me know if you guys haven't seen it. Are you planning on seeing it? If not, what is your favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie? Now, this would typically be the point of the video where I would address mental health because we are a multimedia nonprofit, it takes time out of every video to talk about a mental health moment within the film. Now, this film is littered with mental health, and I feel like I couldn't do it without actually spoiling it. So I, I am planning on eventually coming back to this film post video release and kind of talking specifically about how this film uses mental health and the conversations that we can pour out of it. But in the meantime, if you or someone you know is struggling with suicide, addiction, self-harm, or depression, click the links in the show notes below to check out our mental health resource library. This is the heartbeat of everything we do here at Victims of Villains. In the show notes below, you guys will also find not only the subscribe button to follow us right here on YouTube, but you guys will also find more movie links to follow more movie reviews, our podcast network, uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, also on Patreon to support our mental health education efforts. 
So until next time, remember to keep it classy and keep it spooky.